Um, I am an entrepreneur. I started a company in uh, 89 called Cellnet. It's now owned by Toshiba. Um, it, the, both the companies are in the energy technology space focused on electric utility automation. So my background is in energy, though that's completely unrelated to what we're talking about today. Um, the second company is E-Meter. In the year 2000, we sold it last year to, uh, to Siemens. Um, and I'm currently either between jobs or un unemployed, depending on what my wife, Natalie's aunt, wants me to do. And I'm in the process of writing a book. And I'm going to talk to you about that today, uh, reluctantly writing a book. Um, <clears throat> I've known Tim since 1960. They would put us in the same playpen together when our mothers played bridge. Um, so we are lifelong friends, and uh, our lives have passed each other many times going different directions. He is exactly as he appears in Death Ball, which <laughs> one thing I've learned, I've told my kids, never follow Tim with a new idea. People get hurt. <laughs> I've got tons of stories that, to go back on that. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so that what I'm going to talk about today, and I'm going to please ask questions as we go. Um, it's not a formal presentation. I've talked about this once in my life in front of people, and that was last June. Um, it was that meeting last June, and the tape that came out of that that actually gave the structure for the book that's being written. Um, the book should be out in six months, so I'm going to probably screw up some of this, and if you're interested in the topic, um, I will give you a copy of the book to fix any of the confusion that, uh, that I've created here. Um, the, uh, the subject, the start of it is that, uh, <clears throat> that Einstein made a significant mistake. Um, he had an enormous omission in his general theory of relativity and theory of relativity. And that mistake has had massive repercussions in both the physics community and also all of the other sciences. And I'll talk a little bit about that today, both in health science and in, uh, in uh, the behavior of the universe. Um, <clears throat> So what happened when he introduced his theory of relativity back at the turn of the century, last century, um, it was embraced by the scientific community. And over a period of about 20 years, it went through the, the normal scientific process of replacing Newtonian physics. Um, it answered a lot of the questions. This is not going to be a technical presentation. So don't worry, I'm not a, I'm not a, is anybody here a physicist? Oh, terrific. No questions. Um, chemist? So it's, it's going to conflict with quite a bit of what you learned, um, theoretically. Um, but uh, when, when you introduce a, a theory into the scientific community, one that does cause a paradigm change, once, a paradigm, once the theory is accepted by the scientific community, it's basically inserted as fact. And all new science students and new potential scientists learn it as fact. And what happened in 1927, when it was finally accepted, is Einstein lost control of the theories. Um, and the scientific community then takes it and integrates the theories into all of the different processes and the observations that they have in all of the different sciences, and they build off of those. If a scientific observation and theory does not agree with the core theories, um, it's rejected. You need to make it agree. It's very difficult to go back and change foundational theories. Um, so what happened in 27 is that the theory was put out there, and it started to get a life of its own. It was put in the worldwide scientific community. And Einstein quickly realized that it was wrong. And he'd spent 25 years of his life creating the general theories of relativity. And he spent 30 years of his life trying to fix them. Um, once he went into the process of fixing it and trying, disagreeing with a lot of the other physicists' conclusions, his influence was marginalized. And he was sort of put on the back burner. Um, he was still well respected internationally. But from the scientific community, he was looked at sort of as a heretic. When the theory goes in, in 1927, for argument's sake, for this discussion, let's assume that he was right, that there was an error. All of the observations you see in the 30s and 40s and 50s compound that error. Each observation that's interpreting, using that theory to interpret the error, whose phone is that? Draper's? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, um, it's going to be off because of the error. Then you go through the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 1000s, through a period of massive technological change and enormous uh, uh, observational discoveries in the scientific community. And everything is built on errors that are built on an error that are built on errors. And you end up with this compounded error concept. And what would you expect if you had compounded errors? You'd expect the theory to be inconsistent. You'd expect it to be confusing. 
Um, did anybody take science classes in college? Did anybody understand a lot of that stuff when you started getting into some of the theoretical physics and all that? Yeah, you're wrong, by the way. That's right. Are you on the uh, Titans? Yeah. Oh. The Titans are hurting there. By the way, for the angels, Lupita Island is in Lake Tanganyika in Tanzania. If you're looking for it and you want to uh, find it, yeah, you're welcome. He uh, owns it, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's a very interesting place. And they're having a hard time powering it, so your solutions may help them. Um, but all the errors, and you end up with this extremely confusing, conflicting scientific theory. And that's what we have today. We have something that doesn't make sense. The small quantum does not agree with the large relativity. Um, it has diverged, and it continues to diverge. You end up seeing things like a planet rotating around the Andromeda galaxy too quickly. It defies the theory of gravity. You've got two choices. You can go back and amend the theory of gravity, or you can create something new. I just saw there's some guy talking about dark energy tomorrow. He's full of it. There is no such thing as dark energy. Dark energy is a mathematical plug to defend Einstein's theory of gravity. Now, before you leave here today, you'll understand gravity. It's very simple. And you'll understand how the small scales the large, the large back to the small, and how all that works. Could be very wrong, but at least it's, it's more logical than what's out there today.